You may already know this, but I am obsessed with camera backpacks. And I'm always on the hunt for that one bag that will work in a lot of different situations, whether I'm hiking, traveling, just around the city, it would be so nice not to have to switch bags for different things. But most importantly, as a photographer and videographer, I wanna be able to carry my gear with me and still have some room left over for extra things like snacks and coffee and mostly just coffee and snacks. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Shimoda Explore V2 35 liter that I've been using for the last couple of months and see if it fits those high standards. The video will be broken down into a couple of different sections. We've got pricing and options, comfort, aesthetics and materials, features and functionality, and finally, my personal experience with the bag and who I think it's for. You can use the chapter markers down below if you wanna skip around at all, and there will be a link to the bag and accessories in the description if you wanna go check it out for yourself. So, secure the cup, it's time to explore this bag. See what I did there? Okay, kicking things off with pricing and options. This bag comes in three different sizes. We've got a 25 liter, 30 liter, and 35 liter. We're taking a look at the 35 liter today, and all three sizes come in either black or green. I think they both look nice, but I went with black because I like my bags like I like my coffee. The main differences that I've noticed between the three is that the 25 liter only fits a 13 inch laptop, whereas the other two fit a 16 inch laptop, and the size of camera cube or what Shimoda calls core units are a little bit different for each size of bag. The main reason I went with the 35 liter is because it fits the DSLR core unit, which is a little bit deeper than the mirrorless core unit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when I talk about how I pack this bag. These backpacks come with a rain fly that packs into itself and they have a five year warranty. All three sizes are carry on friendly on most US and international flights. And when you go to buy the bag, there's an option on the website for a free pair of what they're calling women's shoulder straps. Those straps are a little bit smaller and consider the different shapes of some people's bodies. With that being said, let's talk about the comfort. This is definitely one of the most comfortable bags that I've ever had the pleasure of wearing. The padding on the back is really nice. The straps are shaped nicely and they're nice and thick and squishy. And the removable waist strap is super comfy as well. There's a mesh material on all of the surfaces that touch your body, so it's got nice airflow for when you're doing more intense activities. The shoulder straps are adjustable to three different positions depending on your height so that it sits nicer, and there are load adjusters at the top so you can change where the weight is sitting. There's an adjustable chest strap so you can move that up and down on the shoulder straps pretty easily. And on one side of the chest strap, it's actually a whistle as well. But what I think really ties all of that comfort together and makes it work is the fact that there's a rigid frame on this bag. The reason that the nice shoulder straps and the waist strap and the chest strap all do what they're supposed to do is because that rigid frame doesn't allow the bag to twist and turn. And somehow, even with that rigid frame in there, it doesn't feel like a heavy bag. It's five and a half pounds with the medium camera cube in there, but just because everything sits so nicely, it doesn't feel heavy. Okay, so the bag is comfortable, but so are those sweatpants with the holes and the guacamole stains all over them. So how does it look? Like I mentioned before, it comes in the black that you're seeing here or a green. The material itself isn't shiny, but it's not fully matte either. It's somewhere kind of in the middle and I quite like the look of it. Inside all the pockets, we're gonna find Shimoda's signature light blue teal color, which I think looks really nice, especially with the black bag. And functionally, having a nice light color on the inside of the bag makes it easier to find all of the black camera gear that you might throw in it. The leather zipper pull are a nice touch. They contrast against the black a little bit. And there are also a couple of little leather accents on the sides as well. The main material is water resistant. And in my experience, it's rugged and durable. And on the bottom of the bag, they've used an extra durable material since that's the point that's going to be making contact with the ground the most. Shimoda says that all the zippers are YKK splash guard, which I had some trouble finding clarity on what that meant exactly. But from context, I'm going to assume that 
means that they are water resistant. Some of them like this front one look like they might not be, but these main ones on the top and on the sides definitely have some kind of a waterproofing going on. But speaking of waterproofing, there are two holes down at the bottom of the bag, just in case any moisture does get inside the bag that will let that moisture get back out. So from my experience, some light rain and some snow is fine with this bag, but if you're going to be going out in torrential downpour, you're gonna to wanna to bring that rain cover with you. Like I said before, it folds into itself. And then there's just an elastic. So you just wrap that around the bag and you should be good to go if you get caught out in some heavier rain. One small thing that I appreciate is that they made the logo fairly minimal and not kind of over pronounced. I think that really keeps the look of the whole thing nice. And for me, aesthetically, the biggest thing that this bag has going against it is that there's just a lot going on. There are lots of zippers and straps everywhere and not everything has a nice way to tuck it away when you're not using it. But I do think that they found a nice happy medium between looking nice and still being actually functional. Now looking super cool is important, but none of that really matters if the bag doesn't have the features and functionality that we need. Starting with the outside of the bag, we've got nice squishy thick handles on the top and the side of the bag, and this side handle actually doubles as a luggage pass-through as well. And then there's also this much more minimal kind of nylon strap handle at the bottom, which is really nice because you can grab the top and bottom and carry your bag like this this while the back is open and you have access to your camera gear. But when you're not using it, this totally doesn't get in the way at all. We've got the adjustable straps that I mentioned before, and those adjustments are just hidden behind this little zipper pocket. So once you've made your adjustment and you probably don't ever need to do it again, you can kind of tuck it away. On the left side shoulder strap, we've got a nice big zip pocket. This is big enough to hold a fairly large phone. I can put my iPhone 12 Pro in there, no problem. And they've got this little strap here that's designed to clip a wireless microphone onto. So if you've got something like this Pocket TX from Deity, or if you've got the Rode equivalent or whatever, that can fit on there. Nice little touch for video shooters. The right side shoulder strap has another pocket, but it's a little bit different. When you unzip it, you can then expand that and that'll fit something like a small water bottle or you could still throw your phone in there if you wanted to. And because of that zipper at the top, when you're not using it, it folds down nice and flat. Both of the straps have different attachment points. So we've got nylon ones, we've got a plastic loop, we've got these elastic ones. And while I do love the design of these straps, I did find it a little bit difficult to get my Peak Design capture clip on here in a spot that made sense for me. I've had to tuck this plastic loop up under this nylon strap to kind of get it out of the way. And obviously with this big pocket here, I can't bring the Peak Design clip down as far as maybe I would like to, but I have been making it work with this small area, so it does technically fit. Even the removable waist strap has extra pockets on it. There are these little elastic portions where you could toss your lens caps or something like that, and they offer a belt extender for the waist strap, so if you have a bigger body or if you are wearing a lot of winter clothing or something like that and you need a little bit of extra space, you can pick that up from Shimoda and get a little bit of extra room. The bag comes with two detachable accessory straps. There are four points where you can mount them on the front, and there are four points on the bottom so you can have them either across or below the bag for something like a jacket or a sleeping bag or something along those lines. The main zippers on the bag have a little point where you can attach a TSA approved lock and in my experience all of the zippers on this bag function really well. No snags on the corners or slow spots or anything like that. On both sides of the bags we have zippers that reveal stowable water bottle or tripod pockets. So you can pull this pouch out and fit your water bottle or tripod into that. If you put this strap through, you can tighten it down as well as hold it in place. And then there's another strap up at the top to hold the top portion of your tripod against the bag so that it's not flopping around all over the place. And there's a cinch on the actual pouch itself. And the pouch is a decent size. You could probably hold like a one or one and a half liter water bottle in there. Having it be stowable and being able to put it away when you're not using it is really great. The only downside is that these two straps are not removable, so they're kind of always out there and always adding extra to the outside of the bag. It would have been cool if they were either removable or also stowable so that you could tuck them away somewhere where you can't see them when you're not using them. In behind that pouch, there's the pocket where you would normally stow that pouch away so you could use that to store more stuff while the pouch is out. But also there's this zipper that opens up the whole side. 
Again, here's that pouch from the other side all tucked away. And then we've got two pockets here that are this kind of rubbery material. It might even be waterproof. And that's designed to be able to hold a couple of filters. So right now I've got some variable NDs in there. Taking a look at the other side, we've got that same stowable water bottle pocket. So we can pull that out if we want. But this side is a little bit different when we open the main flap. We're gonna see into the camera cube. So this is where we have the side access so we could grab our camera straight out of there while it's still over our shoulder. And then there is a pocket on this door that's Velcroed closed. When you're using it as camera access, this does get kind of filled up by the door of the camera cube itself, but it is still technically usable for something like your passport or some cash or something in there that you wanna be kind of hidden. And if you're not interested in side access, you can just shut that part of the camera cube and then you've got that pocket all the way back open again. There are two main pockets on the front of the bag. This top one opens up and actually goes all the way down to the bottom in behind this other one. And it's also got this divider piece with a little piece of elastic at the top. So you can kind of divide things up in there if you want to. This spot is great for things like an extra shirt or a jacket or something along those lines. And there is a decent amount of padding on it too. So if you wanted to slip like an iPad or something in there, you could go that way too. And then up at the top of this pocket, there are two smaller pockets that look kind of similar to that material we saw on the filter pockets. These are great for little organizational things. Like I like to keep a tool up there and a lens cloth. The bottom of the two front pockets is just a nice big open pocket. You can fit a decent amount of stuff in there. The only catch is because these two pockets overlap each other, if you're filling up one of them, it's taking away space from the other one by pressing in against it. So if I've got like a big t-shirt in that top pocket shoved all the way down, it's pressing out and I get less space in the outside pocket. So you just got to kind of keep that in mind when you're packing up the bag that you kind of only get one or the other, depending on where you want it to be. This outside pocket is great for things like granola bars or a pair of gloves or something that you'll need to get kind of easy access to. All right, moving on to the main compartment of the bag. The main opening of the bag to get to like your camera gear and stuff opens against your back, which is great for a couple of reasons. First of all, it makes it harder to steal anything from you because it's pressing against you. And second of all, when you set down your bag to get your camera gear, you're setting it on the part that's not going to be then touching you later. So if you're setting it on something where it might get dirty, it's not gonna then transfer that dirt onto your back. The other thing that's interesting about it is that it opens to the side like this, whereas a lot of my other bags will open downwards. I like this a lot because it doesn't take up as much space on the ground when you open it up. And also the door doesn't even hit the ground, so it's not getting dirty. Now, I mentioned before that I got the 35 liter because it holds the DSLR core units. These are a little bit deeper than the mirrorless core units that fit better in the 30 liter. And personally, I like a little bit more depth to my camera cubes because I want to be able to stand my bigger lenses up like this instead of having to lay them down. And I like to be able to have my mirrorless cameras on their side so that I can grab from the handle. They also take up a little bit less space when they're on their side like that. The core units themselves also have a rigid frame just like the backpack does, which is awesome because it doesn't actually need any attachment points inside the bag to secure it in place. This makes putting in and taking out core units super easy as compared to a lot of other bags where you've got to fiddle around with Velcro and all that kind of stuff. They've got a bunch of different sizes and shapes of dividers. I really like these things. They're lightweight, they're thin. They've got a nice rigidity while still being soft enough to give you some protection for your gear. The Velcro is super sticky, so it is a little bit tough to get them in and out. You gotta do a little bit of fiddling around, but once you get them set, they actually stay where they're supposed to. So what we're looking at here is the large core unit, but the only real difference is this section here, the medium core unit that typically would come with this bag goes up to about here, and I'll show you that in a second. Regardless of which core unit I'm using, from here to here, I pack exactly the same. So in this middle area here, I would typically have my Sony A1 on its side with a big lens, whether that be a 70 to 200, or in this case, it's the 35 to 150, and then I'll throw a microphone on top of it. I've got space for three lenses here, and like I said, because this is the DSLR core unit, it's deeper, so I can fit things like my 24 to 70 upright like that. In this 
this spot here typically would be my FX3 with like a 16 to 35 on it. And then I've got a little small pocket here that fits my battery case and my SD card case. Because the large core unit is a little bit bigger, I've got space to take my 100 to 400 or any kind of long lens like that, or I could put a drone or something in there. And then if I wanted to split this up, I keep two dividers still in here, just kind of tucked off to the side. So I can grab that easy and just divide it up however I want to. Now let's quickly swap out the large core unit for the medium one and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's that easy to just tuck in the medium core unit. You just make sure that the rigid frame of the unit is under the rigid frame of the backpack itself. Then I can transfer everything over. And if I don't bring the second body with a lens on it, I can fit my 100 to 400 in there too. Now, when we have the medium core unit in here, it opens up some space up here. We've got access to this mesh pocket, or you can just kind of use this as flexible space if you really want to. On the door of this main opening is where we have our laptop sleeve. On the 25 liter, they say that it'll fit up to a 13 inch MacBook Pro. On the 30 and 35 liter, they say it'll hold up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro. But I will admit my new MacBook Pro M1 Max is a tight squeeze. So you can see it just barely fit into that sleeve and then this little corner, I have to kind of pry the bag around it to get it to fit in there. So now when I try to go to open the bag, it gets stuck and I have to make sure I pull it past that corner again. So if you're someone with one of the newer MacBook Pros with the M1 Max chip, they're a little chunkier and they, they do fit, but they're a little tight. And with all that said, this isn't actually the best way to get at the laptop sleeve anyway. At the very top of the bag closest to the back, there's a zipper that opens here. And that reveals the laptop pocket. And personally, I think this is probably the best way to get at it. You can pull it up out of there. This is much harder to do when you have the large core unit in there as it goes up a lot higher and it's rigid. So you gotta kind of reach behind it a little bit. The other thing that we see when we go in this way is the top zipper for that same mesh pocket we saw in the back. So you can access this from the top or the bottom depending on which way you went into the bag. And just in front of that zipper, there's one more zipper to the last compartment. The area that you're gonna get in this compartment is gonna look a little bit different depending on which core unit you have in there. We've got a big main empty space. At the front here, we've got a mesh pocket. And then at the back, we've got this kind of padded pocket, which is kind of cool. And inside that, we've got a detachable key ring. At the start, when I talked about being able to take all my camera gear and a little bit extra, this is the pocket that I'm talking about that is the a little bit extra. It's a nice deep pocket and you can fit a lot of stuff in there. I just switched this back out so we've got the large core unit in here and you can see that we've got a lot less space up in the top. That front mesh pocket, I actually typically will just tuck down in front of the cube here so that it's kind of out of the way. And then the back padded area kind of becomes the platform on top. Technically we can still get at the zipper to get into the padded pocket, but it kind of becomes one little space. Now, if you don't like this whole top pocket situation and all the fabric that's going on in there, there is a third option. There's a little zipper just right here. And if we can kind of get it out of its little hiding spot and unzip it, that whole top pouch area can zip right out. So now we're just left with this big empty space. This is great for people who carry tech organizers and that kind of stuff where you're gonna bring your own pouches and organization anyway. The only problem with this is if you're going to be putting like smaller single items in there, you want to be careful that they're not slipping on the other side of the cube and getting lost down in the bottom of the bag. All right, so I know that that was a lot. There is a lot going on with this bag and I may have given it away already, but I have really been enjoying this bag for the last couple of months that I've been using it. Like I said before, this is one of the most comfortable bags that I've ever worn. The padding, the adjustability, and the rigid frame working together. Aesthetically, I like it enough to be photographed in it. It's not my usual sleek Batman style. It's definitely got a bit more of that adventure backpack vibe, which is okay, because that's what it's intended for. And it's really nice not to 
have to switch bags every time I'm going to do something different. But I think my absolute favorite thing about this bag is just how well thought out it is. I really appreciate not only the attention to detail, but also the ability to just keep things simple where simple makes sense. There are so many bags out there that are focused on doing something new and different. And sometimes that might turn out neat, but neat doesn't necessarily mean that it's functional. But on this bag, it feels like they've given me features that actually work how I want them to and solved problems that I actually wanted solving. I'm a really big fan of the camera cubes for these bags as well. That rigid frame is something that I didn't know I wanted, but I'm so glad it's in there. There are a few things about the bag that can be a little bit annoying. There's a lot going on and there are straps all over the place and some of them would have been cool if they were removable or if you could tuck them away somewhere. And then the other thing is in that top compartment, especially when you've got the large core unit in there, there's a lot of excess fabric. And sometimes that can be a little bit annoying because it just kind of moves freely in there. I think this is a great bag for photographers who shoot landscape or who travel a lot, as well as people who have versatile needs and want one backpack that can kind of do it all. It's definitely a more expensive camera bag. So if you just need something for hopping around the city, it might be a little bit overkill, but if you need something that can handle all those different situations, this is a great option. Like I said before, if you wanna know more, there are links in the description to the bag and some accessories, so you can go check that out. But as always, I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the Explore V2. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.